With roots back to 1938, the Big Crown Pointer Date is one of the most iconic designs from Oris, and one of my personal favorites as well. In recent years, we have seen a variety of different iterations, dials, case materials, and sizes. However, I think many wanted a design that split the difference of sizing, say something around 38 millimeters, while also being available with that kind of more standard Salita caliber on the inside to make it very price competitive. So in this video, we're looking at a brand new creation from the Oris Big Crown Pointer Date family with the Servo Volante. They have some new striking dials, different leather combinations to really make these pop, but also a 38 millimeter case. Let's jump in. Now, before we jump into the review of these watches, I do wanna mention that we are an authorized dealer of Oris. So if you are interested, you go through this video, you like what you're seeing, we have more information on our website, we can also purchase the watch as well, full authorized dealer of Oris. So starting with some background on Oris as well as this model family, the brand was founded in 1904 and remains independently operated, not falling underneath the typical group structure of the watch industry as a whole. While likely being best known for its Aquas collection of dive watches in recent years, the brand's number one seller, it is the Big Crown family that actually claims the most heritage for the brand, tracing its roots back to 1938. In a modern context, the Big Crown collection is split between the broad collection of Salita powered variants priced around $2,000 and the more recent Caliber 403 powered models released last year. Modern Oris is also known for its environmentally friendly positioning, really specializing in that uh, type of sustainability, having produced collaborative timepieces such as the Upcycle, Whale Shark GMT, and others with prominent ocean conservation associations. With this new non-limited take on the Big Crown, Oris is highlighting its relationship with Chervo Volante, a Swiss leather goods manufacturer founded in 2017 that utilizes sustainable wild Swiss deer leather in producing a range of luxury leather goods, including the well-done straps on each of these new Big Crown models. Each of the three dials in this collection features a color inspired by alpine hues combined with an appealing fume effect. And while we have all three in hand for the comparison here, we'll focus on mostly the blue dial because I just find it the most visually striking. Diving into the overview portion of our review here, we'll begin with a conversation on the case and wearing experience presented by these new models. In recent years, the Salita powered Big Crown Pointer dates have really been available in 40 millimeters and 36 millimeter variants with some exceptions, one being the most recent caliber 403 edition uh, to the collection coming in with a 38 millimeter diameter that neatly splits the difference while also presenting a substantial upcharge to a price around $3,400. And while there are some other notable aspects to this watch, perhaps the biggest move being demonstrated by this new model family is the combination of the more affordable third party caliber on the inside and the wrist-friendly 38 millimeter diameter. The mass appealing case width combined with the 45.5 millimeter lug to lug and the 12.5 millimeter thickness should make this a pointer date for the masses, or at least those that might have just been longing for a slightly smaller case compared to the conventional 40 millimeter. When it comes to the case architecture and finishing presented by this 38 millimeter pointer date, we have fine linear brushing on the sloping lug tops that meet the polished vertical case sides at a stark 90 degree angle. Resting on top of the case is a highly polished coin edge bezel that has become one of the more defining characteristics of this entire model family. At three, the namesake Big Crown measures in a substantial 7.3 millimeters in diameter while also being signed and of the screw down variety, pairing with the screw down exhibition case back and securing this watch's 50 meters of water resistance, which in my opinion is one of the main points of contention when you look at this watch, especially given the screw down crown. Now set between 19 millimeter lugs, we have the other star of the show here when you're talking about just the changes besides the new case size, and that is a leather strap with quick release bars produced from wild red deer leather within Trevo Volante's workshop in Switzerland. So now just to offer some context here on this company, so they recognized at a time a few years ago, 15,000 deer hides were being wasted every single year in Switzerland and found a way to repurpose this waste and implemented an environmentally friendly process that also preserves any imperfections in the hide itself and just through that tanning process. On the wrist, the straps are attractive with each shade intended to complement the three dial colors in this collection while tapering from a somewhat challenging 19 millimeters at the lugs to a minuscule for at least that comparison at 15 millimeters 
at the sign pin buckle. Between the smaller tapering strap and the highly domed sapphire crystal, which is treated with anti-reflective coated material on the underside, the watch has a bit of a vintage feel on the wrist, nothing new here compared to some of the other variations, but avoids any heritage claims by leaning into a modern, striking, and colorful dial presentation. In any of the three dial variants, the design is taken directly from the standard big crown pointer date with a numerical date track printed at the periphery, a railway minute track with loom triangles at the five minute positions, printed Arabic markers, and a cathedral handset with the pointer date hand color coordinated to each of the dials, although perhaps too much so as the drop of a higher degree of contrast on that indicator might be harder on some eyes. While the majority of this model family leans into more of a traditional execution in terms of color, these new model variants are executed with a pleasing pop of color in addition to a gradient fume style effect that is lighter at the center and darkens near the dial's outskirts. Loom is present on the dial and hands, and while it isn't amazing, it is adequate and bright enough for easy nighttime legibility when you do need it. And while these eye-catching variants likely provide just a little less in terms of versatility compared to some more standard models, the overall demonstration of novelty and difference is welcome for this family, presenting a more audacious take on the established design format. Now, shifting our attention to the movement, here we have an exhibition case back with its own coin edge, keeping watch over the venerable third-party caliber from Salida. So like a lot of independent brands at or around this price point, Modern Aura selected to make the change over to Solita calibers after years of being supplied by ETA. And honestly, we're probably one of the leading proponents of these calibers and led to industry-wide adoption in many ways. Now, the Pointer Date family has long depended on a subtly modified version of the SW200, a basic time and date caliber made to mirror the ETA 2824. For the price, the SW200 is one of the most proven, reliable, and capable movements on the market, a fact that sees this caliber utilized in many different watches across a wide variety of brands and price ranges. Given the pointer date complication here, these calibers are slightly modified from the traditional date wheel execution to allow an additional hand in this pointer date functionality. The visible caliber here is sparsely decorated with an overall matte effect only offset by several polished screw heads, and of course the signed red rotor that has become one of Oris's signature elements for decades. Decades now. It comes with a traditional regulator pin setup, but in terms of general operation, 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz. It does feature hacking and hand winding and a power reserve of 38 hours. And now speaking anecdotally to the accuracy here, we took each one of these examples of the three that we have here just to kind of show it off and then tested them at five different positions. The blue dial variant kept time between minus three to plus one seconds a day across those positions, the gray plus four to plus nine, and the green plus five to plus eight. Of course, results Results may vary, but I found all of these were running pretty exceptional, and this is not going to be the caliber 400. So I think for a basic Salita caliber that you're getting here, I think these are perfectly in alignment with what you should expect, if not actually exceeding expectations. All right, so now that we've looked at these watches in a bit more detail, let's speak more specifically on some general cons and you know, things that are working in the direction of these pieces in a more favorable way. Now, beginning with some of the cons here, I think. One of the things is just going to be the dial. Are these really the ones that many people are gonna to gravitate towards? I don't know. They are going to be perhaps more polarizing and there is some questions of contrast when you're looking at the pointer date hand and how it's going to kind of bounce off that dial compared to maybe some other variations that we've seen in the past. Not as much contrast there, so that could be a downside. 50 meters of water resistance is always going to be a point that I think some people are going to have a problem with. I am not one of those people that thinks that you need to have this crazy water resistance for everything, but I do think that having this be 100 meters, as long as they didn't have to add so much to the thickness, might go a long way in allowing these to be really solidified as one of the leading options in this price range for the everyday type of category, which I think they are, but maybe not fully to that degree. And then one final point is these aren't going to be the most affordable pointer date options. You're not paying a crazy premium on these, but they are going to be a tad more expensive expensive than your conventional pointer date. So you have to kind of make your decision of how much do you really like these new dial designs, uh, the new straps, which I think are very well done. I think they're a nice upgrade compared to some of the more conventional things. And of course the uh, attachment or alignment with uh, just general sustainable types of initiatives, I think is always a pretty good thing. Now looking more on the pro side, and I think the main reason why I wanted to cover these watches was more when looking at the potential for different case options in the future, but also what these are presenting. Outside of the new Caliber 403, and I think there's other questions why uh, maybe somebody would look in that direction because you're talking about a whole new caliber and a whole new price range at the end of the day. But this is the standard kind of $2,000 price range, give or take, that we've seen for this model family for several years now. 
And I think this allows them to really stand out. I, for a long time, always liked the 40 millimeter. I, I was kind of one of those people that the 36 was a tad too small for my liking, and then the 40 millimeter was maybe a tad too big. So I was always kind of subconsciously thinking about splitting the difference would be great. And this wears like a true 38 on the wrist. So I think the size and what they've nailed here is fantastic. And I think this could really help a lot of people that maybe were on the fence about these uh, in the past, this a whole family of these watches to now finally pull the trigger and maybe want to look in the direction of these. I think the dials are spectacular. I really like the look of these. Uh, Oris has been, I think, uh, very open and experimenting with new colors and combinations. I just like the brand's focus in the last 18 to 24 months and just trying new things. We saw it with the upcycle, we saw it with the cotton candies. I think this is just more in alignment with that. Maybe not as daring, but still I think well done. Leather straps, again, as I mentioned, very nice. But I'm also excited about what this could potentially hold for the future of Oris. There was a lot of questions when you saw the Caliber 4 threes come out. How are they going to continue to differentiate the Caliber 400 family of watches with the more Solita powered calibers? A lot of concerns when I posted about the Caliber 400s when that came out, they're like, oh no, they're changing the entire design DNA of the Big Crown Pointer Day family. But with these coming out, now available in 38 and then having a, a Salita Caliber, it seems very clear and evident that Oris is absolutely okay with offering both, which I think is the right thing to do. You can develop uh, just that new kind of category for yourself for those that really care about more of the in-house spec that will come with the Caliber 400s as they just spend more time in the market, they continue to refine what is available in that collection. Then you also have what has been working for so long and has allowed Oris to be one of the definitive, I would say value providers in the price range of $2,000. And these have become a very welcome new addition to that Big Crown Pointer Date family that I've just been a fan of for quite some time. It's actually my favorite Oris uh, model family of all their watches. And I think these really nailed it in terms of sizing. And really nice to see this new model family get some added additions to the overall collection. But all right, guys, I'd like to see your comments down below. What, what do you think of these new models? Do you think they knocked it out of the park? Do you think it's somewhere in the middle? Or do you think these are just like, meh? Love to see comments. What do you guys think of this? Also, what is your just overall approach? The 38 millimeters, 36 millimeters, 40 millimeters. Uh, do you like this type of case size? Do you think 40 was right? What would you like to see from Oris in the future? Because I think this is an indicator that they are certainly not going to forget about this price range of $2,000 and are going to continue to think about what works here. So what would you guys wanna see? If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Also, as mentioned, if you like what you saw here from these watches, definitely check them out. They are available on teddybaldasar.com as well. Full authorized dealer of all the brands we carry, including Oris with a full factory warranty. In addition, definitely check out the pre-owned section, new models coming in every single week. Also follow along on Instagram if you wanna see some great photos of watches and see what's kind of coming down the pipe on the video side and subscribe to our weekly newsletter if you want written content in addition to what we're doing here on a you know weekly basis. Totally different uh, operation there and we have some great written content coming out. So definitely subscribe, go to the bottom of the website and check that out. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well and I'll see you all very soon.